Hey everyone, thank you for attending my talk. Uh, the project I'm discussing today, uh, done in collaboration with my supervisor, Dr. Simon Bonner and Dr. Wendell Challenger, is focused on studying the assumption of independence in mark recapture models and whether that assumption is violated for populations in which models will form long-term pair bonds. So to begin, I'll provide some details on the motivation behind the study. Uh, I'll present an extension to the Cormac Jolly Seaver model that my collaborators and I have worked on. And finally, I will discuss the results of my simulation study, which highlights some concerns that come from modeling um, correlated mark recapture data using the standard CGS method. So I'll begin with some background. So as most of us probably already know, the CGS model is a common method of estimating the survival rates of a wildlife population that was sampled using mark recapture methodologies. Um, so I wanna draw your attention to one of the main assumptions of this model, which is that individual fates are independent from one another. So this is often an unrealistic thing among social animals and can lead to reduced precision for estimates of survival and recapture. There's a lot of cases in which animals would have joint fates. For example, um, animals that form long-term mate pairings. So with that, I'll present an extension to the CGS model that accounts for this correlation between mated pairs. So to begin, um, I want you to consider a population of animals in which males and females form long-term pair bonds. <clears throat> we make the following assumptions. So we assume that pairs will enter the study area together. Um, we can identify which animals are paired up at each sampling occasion. And um, we assume that animals will not separate or form another pair bond during the study period. Um, furthermore, we're going to um, we're going to refer to these things called entities. So that's either a pair of a male and a female, or a single male or a single female. Okay. So here we have similar parameters to the standard CGS model. Um, singles are effectively modeled in the exact same way, um, but pairs are instead modeled using two joint distributions for survival and recapture, um, each with four possible outcomes. So the states of the survival distribution are that both animals and a pair survive, only the male survives, only the female survives, or both perish from one point in time to another. Similarly, the states of the recapture distribution are that both partners are caught, only the male is caught, only the female is caught, or both remain uncaptured at some time t. So we also account for the possibility that mates may temporarily act as independent from one another, um, we've observed that, for example, in harlequin ducks, breeding can be skipped in some periods due to unfavorable environmental conditions, such as a lack of food, um, and then they won't form a pairing for that time period. So we denote the joint survival and recapture probabilities for a mated pair with phi and p respectively, um, with the state for each probability term in the superscript of the parameter for a convenience of notation. So for example, um, phi to the MF, uh, is the probability that a pair um, both survives uh, from one time point to another. <clears throat> so here's the model. Um, so as you can see, we modeled the survival and recapture outcomes using a multinomial distribution uh, with each probability mass function cataloged in a matrix format. So the first two rows in both matrices represent the probabilities for a mated pair. Uh, the first row, sorry. The second row represents the probabilities for just a single female third row for a single male, and the fourth is the case in which um, that individual from that entity has perished. Uh, furthermore, we also account for temporary separation uh, using a Bernoulli trial. So for any period, a pair can be separated. Um, if it's just a single, we, we always just assume that parameter is zero. And uh, so we condition on this DJT, this temporary separation, um, in the joint distribution of the of, of the density for the pairs, which was omitted um, due to time. Okay, so I've conducted a simulation study that highlights three concerns that arise from using the standard CGS model to analyze data with dependent pairs. So these are as follows. Standard errors are underestimated for models that don't account for a gender effect. The likelihood ratio test between models um, comparing whether there's a gender effect in either recapture or survival um, actually loses interpretability. And the standard variance correction, known as C hat, is uh, not able to account for or detect this type of overdispersion. 
Okay, so here are some uh, details of the simulation study. So I generated data sets under the extended CGS model for a sample of 200 animals across four time steps with equal survival and recapture probabilities for both males and females across various levels of correlation. So I fixed the number of pairs in the model to be essentially the majority of the population. Uh, so as many animals are, are paired up as they could be. And we denote the amount of survival correlation between a given mated pair uh, with the symbol gamma and the recapture correlation between a mated pair with the symbol rho. Okay, so to add to this, um, at each level of survival and recapture correlation, I used the extended model to generate a thousand data sets. These data sets were then modeled using the standard unmodified CGS model under four different parameter set settings. <clears throat> So one of them assumes that there is an effect for survival and recapture of gender. Uh, one assumes that there is only a recapture effect. One assumes there's only a survival effect. And then one is the most simple case in which there is no difference between survival, um, between gender for survival and recapture. Okay, so to address the first concern, um, we calculated the mean relative um, bias, the estimated survival, bias, uh, the relative width of the confidence intervals and the percent coverage of the confidence intervals across various levels of survival correlation. Um, and in this example, we fixed the recapture correlation to zero. Okay, so the model results in this chart um, come from the case in which the model does not have an effect for gender for either survival or recapture. Um, along the x-axis, you can see the uh, level of survival correlation between each pair. Um, and the data was generated with the extended model. Each point represents a Monte Carlo estimate um, when it was simulated through the standard CGS model. Um, so the estimates of survival probability, relative bias, and confidence ranges are relatively immune to changes in survival correlation. Um, however, if you consider the first plot on the second row, we do see that the percent coverage of the intervals begins to drop from the expected 95%, which is shown on the red line, down to 87%. So this means that the standard errors are lower than they should be because they're not providing the um, theoretical amount of coverage. Okay, so if we look at the case for all four different model settings that we used, um, we see that when we look at the model that does not account for an effect of survival, um, typically the confidence intervals are uh, too short. So they're, they're, we're having underestimated standard errors. So in the case in which this correlation does exist in the data, um, if the researcher is using a model that doesn't have an effect for gender, they're going to get under um, understated standard errors, depending on the level of correlation. Okay, so the second concern is that the interpretability of the likelihood ratio test um, begins to fail. So um, you guys can recall that the likelihood ratio test can be used to compare different cases of the standard CGS model, and we can see whether the reduced models account for an acceptable amount of variation within the data. So figure one represents the hierarchy for the CGS model we're looking at when gender effect is under consideration for both survival and recapture. So each line in this hierarchy represents a possible likely ratio test between a more general model and a relatively reduced model. So to study this behavior um, on correlated mark recapture data, I computed the density of both the test statistic and the corresponding p-values across various levels of survival correlation in the data. So based on Wilkes theorem, these distributions should be um, approximately chi-squared and uniform respectively. And the test in this example is between the model with a survival effect and no recapture effect against a simple model with no effect. And you can see that with the red line. <clears throat> okay, so here's the densities for the likely ratio test of the p-values and the test statistic, test statistic itself, sorry, um, in the top and bottom panel. Uh, this corresponds to the standard CGS model case, and in this data set there is no survival correlation. So if we include a density for up to 30% correlation, 60%, 90%, and finally 100%. So notice that the distribution of the likelihood ratio test um, begins to shrink all of its mass towards zero, and that the p-values are beginning to skew upwards towards one as the survival correlation gets bigger. So for a test with 95% significance, we would expect the area to the left of the dotted line in the bottom panel to be equal to about 5%. Um, but as the correlation between pairs is increasing, this region actually shrinks down to zero, um, which essentially means that this test is becoming overly conservative and that the standard assumptions are fail failing. And so in that case, when the researcher picks the simpler model, they're going to actually have understated standard errors. Okay, 
So in the final case, um, we're going to look at the C hat correction, uh, which is just the deviance between the most general model in our hierarchy and a saturated model divided by the um, degrees of freedom. So as a reminder, if the C hat is well above one, then the data has over dispersion, which suggests that the extra, there's extra binomial variation in the data. Um, and that's usually accounted for with quasi likelihood methods or a model improvement. So in our case, we studied C hat by simulating its distribution and then computing the median for every model in our hierarchy uh, across a grid of increasing survival correlations. Um, note that we use perfect recapture correlation throughout in order to investigate the most extreme case. Okay, so in this figure, you can see the C hat distribution across many different correlation levels for all four of our model cases. So for every case in which we model genders, a gender effect, um, the majority of the densities, I mean, the, the majority of the, of the area under the densities is around one, which essentially means that our estimate of C hat will be close to one and that we won't see um, that indicator for dispersion. The only case in which we see the behavior that we would expect is in the model that does not have an effect for gender in survival or recapture. Um, and this case is actually equivalent to having replicated data, um, which previous studies have shown that uh, the C hat correction works very well in this, in this scenario. But uh, the recommended approach is to use the most general model. So if in a practical setting, the researcher would essentially see that the C hat is, is at one. So to summarize, in the presence of mated correlation, we have that the likelihood ratio test is overly conservative. Uh, standard errors are underestimated for simpler models in our hierarchy. And the C hat correction does not work reliably when we model the correlated groups <laughs> separately. So we need to find a way to either detect this, um, this over dispersion better, or we need to come up with a more general model that um, works in practice. So I'd like to thank NSERC and the government of Ontario for providing um, both a research grant and a scholarship. And so that concludes my presentation. Does anyone have any questions?